Sometimes you go over the top rope Then you bang your head on the ring apron And that's when you feel like a big dope Cause they're the worst bumps you can be taken It's the hardest part of the ring It's the hardest part of the ring Two more sometimes you reach out for the hot tag And you go ahead and make your own comeback Why do you do that? That's when you should quit wrestling and you're better off rolling in thumbtacks. It's the hardest part of the ring. Hey, it's the hardest part of the ring. One more, sometimes you're distracting the referee. And the baby face he has your wrestler pinned. Then you get punched to the ring apron. And you realize all the trouble you're in when it's the hardest part of the ring. The hardest part of the ring. Now double claps. Here we go, Bob Squad. Are you getting pumped, Chris Miwa? Are you getting jacked, Chris Miwa? I want to get super ripped, get chiseled, get stacked, get buff. Here we go. It's the hardest part of the ring. The hardest part of the ring. Bada bada boo. Yay. What it is, Bob Squad. House tricks. How's the kids? Tip the veal. Tried the waitress. Some weather we're having. Working hard, but hardly working. Punching the clock and passing the buck. Burn the candle at both ends. Burn the midnight oil. Rubbing elbows, grease and palms, schmoozing, networking, movers, shakers, trendsetters, go getters, gypsies, tramps and thieves, whistling, Dixie, waxing philosophical, shooting the shit and chewing the fat, a one trick pony, beating a dead horse, hogging the covers and staining the sheets, pissing blood and bleeding piss. There is no stopping us. We're talking about the Hulu edition, the Hulu edition, the Hulu edition of the Monday Night Raw with not limited enough commercial interruption for September 27th of 2021. And. What do we start to... Hi, everyone. It's me, Bob. Wow. Um, any news? Any news in the Bob world? Hey, I thank all of you. Okay, let's rephrase. I thank both of you. <laughs> now, thank you for all of you who watched my uh, my fun boxing, uh, Lego Classic, a Batman TV series. I'm going to play with it right now. You can't see because this is an audio medium, you understand. But take my word for it. I'm putting them back on the spinny stand and uh, enjoying it. So thanks for taking a journey with me. I very much enjoyed it. I'm going to change the name of the channel to the Bob Squad. I'm going to figure out how to do that tonight. The channel should, shouldn't be named after. The thing is, it's the channel was originally really just for clips of stand-up comedy, which uh, I put up one recently, but really, I don't put up many. I mean, obviously, COVID stopped everyone's clips of stand-up stand comedy for a long time, but really, it was just for stand-up and uh, I don't know, this thing's about toys, it's about the wrestling podcast, it's about the the sun bobs and the fun boxings and the wrestlings, those three things mainly, and uh, stand-up is a part of it, but you all know that. And uh, the Beach Town still exists. I mean, we're, we've had a lot of scheduling issues, myself and Jesse. He's got shows coming up, at a, he's going to Vegas at the last minute, I'm going to uh, uh, a, a club much closer, but nevertheless at the last minute, and it's just been getting all kinds of screwed up. Um, so. It still exists. We're going to figure out a better way to do it. I don't know what it is yet. Okay, so just bear with us there. Don't just keep doing your grapes. Keep doing them. Keep doing them. We'll work on something. Okay. Uh, probably would have had two episodes last week if I not uh, had not ended up uh, doing the weekend at the comedy store in San Diego. Like I, I did not plan on. But let's go to the wrestling. Let's go to the wrestling. The wrestling, the proverbial squared circle where the irresistible force meets the immovable object. They are hanging from the rafters. We got an ass every 18 inches, Daddy. You can cut the electricity with a knife. <laughs> Woo! Oh, I don't. Oh, shit. Don't do that one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a thing right now. Um. Anyway, we start off with a WWE championship match. This entire show takes place on the heels of Extreme Rules, where all of the heels were winning. Oh, okay. um, I think so, yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, uh, odd thing about, well, so let's go backwards a little bit. Sunday night was the Extreme Rules pay-per-view, where traditionally every pay-per-view, every match on the pay-per-view has a uh, has a gimmick. There's usually, usually it's some kind of no-DQ street fight, no-holds-barred, which are all the exact same match that drives me bananas. Sometimes, sometimes it's a false count anywhere, which is pretty much the same thing. Um, and there might be a cage, there might be a specific table thing, you put the person through a table. It's a nice little non-finish thing, but just a night of excitement. And it always sucks for the main events, because then they got to follow everything under the sun. And in this case, um, my thing go out? Am I still recording? Yeah, I'm good. 
Uh, Roman Reigns and Finn Balor were the only no-rules, weapons type of match in the entire show, and they went last. And it helps them because everything they do means more, and traditionally in the pro wrestling sense, yes, it is correct to not do that every freaking match, and then the main events get killed. People are tired, and uh, it doesn't mean anything. But that's that's the correct pro wrestling crowd psychology sense. Yes, you would not do that the entire show, because then there's nowhere to go. On the other hand, they do advertise that every match is going to have a stipulation, at least some kind of gimmick to it, and they, they, they didn't at all. So um, either do we advertise... Or don't do it and don't advertise it. I mean, I mean, pick a lane, all right? What did Miyagi say? You stand in a, the left side of the road, squish. You stand in the right side of the road, squish. You stand in the middle, squish, because you're standing in the fucking road. Fuck! That's not what he said. He caught a fly with chopsticks. Okay? Fly. Chopsticks. There's a Pixar movie in that whole scene somewhere. I don't know where it is. Can we start the show, Bob? No. Bob's screwing around because I can't read my handwriting. That's really what I'm doing. I can't read what I wrote. So I'm giving you nonsense, Bob Squad. We start <laughs> We start off. So we, we, so we have a lot of important matches today with stipulations, which I'll get into as we go on. We start off with Big E in his first official title defense, I believe, against Bobby Lashley in My Neighbor's Blasting Music. And it looks like Biggie's. It starts off him getting his ass kicked by Bobby Lashley, and he's. It looks like he's bleeding from the mouth a little bit. I don't know if he has internal injuries or they were trying to sell it as though he had internal injuries. I don't know the answer. But Biggie is dominated by Bobby Lashley here, and I'm getting a little nervous at this point. So I'm like, oh jeez, I'm still yeah, as well as this show ended for E. I'm still nervous about what the type of champion I think they're making him out to be. And I'm still a little iffy on it, but. Uh, better hopes after this night, but still, I'm a little nervous about it. And I think the, the lineup of Saudi Arabia is a, a big tell for that. Anyway, I don't want to get into Saudi Arabia. So Big E and Lashley, and Big E's coming back, and he's hitting Lashley with his moves and everything else. And as much as I don't want them to kill off E's comedy and his personality, he has to be pissed off at the right times. And I thought tonight was really well done. Tonight should have been a night he was pissed off or psyched up uh, for both the matches that he had, the first and last match of the show, because he bookended the show, as you probably already know. If you watch this, Chris just listens to me ramble. I don't even know why, but I'm glad to have you here. <laughs> it's always appreciated. Mark is all in. He is waiting. He's like, I can't wait. <laughs> See how Bob's going to ruin the show. Um. So Biggie Mounts has come back, and as he does, the Hurt Business, the former uh, stable Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin, uh, the... Wow, they both have two first names, don't they? I'll be damned. So, because <laughs> that's, that's what's important, Bob. Fuck me. So they're ringside, and they're a distraction, and the New Day come out, and then start fighting the other two new uh, reunited Hurt Business guys, and the, the six of them brought a ring double DQ. And that actually would have been fine. That would have been fine for just this. Um, but Randy Orton was not here. I like to overpronounce T's now. I don't know why I, I like doing that, Orton. I don't really talk like that, but on, on, on microphone I do, just to be an ass. Uh, so without Randy Orton here, there is a, a little loss of star power, so that might add to why... Um, Big E and Lashley wrestled the first and last match. So a double DQ, and everybody's very upset, and there's a lot of brawling. And then we cut to backstage. Riddle is talking to an Irish guy. And then Riddle has his headphones on. He's singing Randy Orton's music and looking up to the heavens as though Randy's dead, even though he's in St. Louis. And then he sees Omos and AJ Styles. And I guess that means we're going to have AJ and Riddle again later on for the nine millionth time. That was the main event when I was at Raw on August 23rd. <laughs> it's been a month. <laughs> Same match. Uh, Damian Priest just talks for a few seconds. He's wearing glasses. I don't know why. And he sounds like um, uh, someone's got a knife to his throat as he's reciting some verbiage. Then New Day talks to an Irish guy, and they're dancing, and Big E is still psyched, though. The other two guys are fooling around a bit, which is okay, but they're still there to support Big E. So I had no problem with any of this. 
Then we have a U.S. Championship match. Okay, this is the first of two matches. The first of two that have extreme rules that were supposed to happen 24 hours ago. <laughs> anyway, Damian Priest and Sheamus wrestle this match, and people start getting into it. Table makes an appearance. Uh, Sheamus picks up Priest, and what a show of strength by Sheamus, because Priest is a big boy, and Sheamus is holding him with no help in that crazy white noise, drop you on your high on your shoulders kind of move, and he, they're standing on a ring apron, which by the way is the hardest part of the ring, if you didn't know, hardest part of the ring, it's the name of the podcast as well, hardest part of the ring, it's the hardest, that's what it's, it's like to knock on the ring apron, why? It's the hardest part of the ring, okay, and they crash to the table. And uh, Priest has got some some legit scrapes and scraps and blood on his side. And I always say that's the blood I like the most. The modest, not gratuitous, but we came from a real place blood. Really hard way, as they like to say. But he's not gushing. It's not like, ugh, it's just okay. He's, he's clearly banged up. So these two have a good back and forth, and Priest does win the thing, uh, of course. Um, I think just beats him with his finish. I thought it would be cool, and they didn't do this, but um, they had at one point a, a table set up in a corner because if Priest goes through one, so does Sheamus. And I think Priest just grabbed him by the neck and just made him run, run through the thing, and that was fine. Because Sheamus, Sheamus, Sheamus is tough as all. I love Sheamus. You see, he loves hitting and getting hit. I don't know if he loves getting hit. He probably loves hitting. He hits and he gets hit, and it's all good. And he he went through that damn table. And dude's like 43, I think. Um, I don't know if that matters. Not discriminating, I'm just saying. Uh, I thought it would be great one of these times if a heel is setting up a table in a corner and just gets rolled up from behind and pinned, and, like, there it is. Fuck your table. But I don't know if the people will cheer because the babyface won or boo because the table wasn't used, but that would be a true test as to who is over, the superstar in theory or the inanimate object. Priest is still the United States champion. Very good. Oh, this is where I start getting a little antsy, and I'll explain it in a, in a, in a bit. Do drop. Formerly Piper Niven, uh, she is doing a dance for no reason, very much like Emma, about eight, nine years ago, something like that. Remember this, Mark? You remember this? The robot. She was doing like kind of, kind of like a robot arm dance, sort of, not really, kind of. Yeah. Anyway, she's dancing for no reason as she's walking around because that's when people dance. Uh, she approaches Sonya Deville and Adam Pearce, and she says, "Hey." Can I wrestle Charlotte for the championship? And they say, okay. Well, then why the fuck are there other matches where people beat each other up to get these title opportunities, as they like to say? <laughs> why? <laughs> she just went in, danced, and said, gonna have one? And they went, yup. <laughs> well, all right, then. <laughs> the hell do I know? Who writes this crap? I'm sending someone a text. <laughs> Um, so we go to Riddle and AJ, and again, this is two of the best athletes, uh, wrestlers on the whole freaking show, and I was bored out of my skull because I've seen it 90 times. AJ versus either, does AJ just have a deal where he wrestles Riddle or Orton forever? And I have a funny hunch that the three of them, Riddle, AJ, and Orton, are kind of all buddy-buddy, and they like to keep it that way. And I think... I wouldn't be surprised if Orton likes wrestling AJ because the matches are good. AJ knows what he's doing, slows down, sells, and no one gets hurt. I wouldn't be surprised if that was a combination of reasons. And that's actually uh, reasons why most wrestlers like wrestling certain wrestlers. Uh, Riddle gets dropped on his freaking head, though. That came out. That was a surprise to me. I think AJ was doing, going for like his burning hammer thingy and... Yeah, he didn't quite, he, he dumped him, and it, it wasn't good. Then he had a Styles Clash, and he just beat him clean. It was just a flat beat him. There you go. Um, a little unnerving. It looked like Riddle was all right, but, it, I mean, it wasn't pretty um, by any means. I don't like to see it. Uh, I mean, AJ's one of the best in the world and probably one of the safest, too. I only say probably because I haven't wrestled him, but I'm pretty sure that's a safe uh, safe bet there. Shit always happens. I mean, shit can happen with any two. I don't care who it is. Um, good to see Riddle moving around. So, so far, I've, we've heard nothing, um, which is good. But then Riddle, <laughs> if he didn't get hurt from being dropped on his head, he takes a shitty choke slam from Omos, who's not let him take his own bump and kind of lands him sideways. And 
he's up way too fast and down way too fast. Uh, it, that was the shits. It was really the shits. And that looked more likely to cause injury to somebody than that one high on your shoulders uh, landing. Because, I mean, at least, at least with that riddle, with your, at least you're warm and you're, you're stretched and you're flexible and you can roll through it. And you, but that, that shitty bump that Omos didn't let him take himself, um, not happy, dangerous. I don't like it. Why is that guy? And why is that guy not getting better? That big guy. I, I, not happy. Um, I like people not paralyzed. That's how I like them. Okay. And if I'm, I'm being, if I'm making it too serious now, I'm sorry, but I like guys not in wheelchairs. That's how I like my wrestlers and girls, women. I'm, I'm sorry. You get the idea. A blonde lady talks to Shayna Baszler, but Shayna Baszler doesn't say anything in return. She walks away. And then Charlotte wrestles Dewdrop. Okay. Now, I was really critical on Charlotte for the Extreme Rules episode I did just the other day against Alexa Bliss and her buildup the week before on Raw with how she just basically took a dump on Alexa's head uh, for the last several weeks for this whole little program here. And now, Charlotte had every right to go through Dewdrop and Eva Marie, and we'll get there, there in a second, because everyone around her was acting like a buffoon. So Charlotte should have treated them like buffoons, and did. And I agree with how Charlotte was used here. I agree with how Charlotte did everything and carried herself for every second she was on the television screen on this program. I'm a fair man, guys. I'm a fair man. A complete 180 from how I felt about what she did at Extreme Rules and the week before for half, the second half of that promo. Um, no complaints from Charlotte here. Charlotte wrestles Dewdrop. So Dewdrop has, of course, super happy, jolly music. She's a big gal, okay? She's a big, big gal. And all I could think was in my head, I bet you Vince just thinks, oh, fat, dance, funny. Do that. You're jolly. It's, you just can't stop dancing because you're a fat idiot. And she did, and that's how she acted, and that's not how I think she is. Um, I know she can wrestle. She can have long athletic matches. She can go. I think she's everything Nia Jax never was, and I hate to compare the two of them because of the size, but, I mean, you have to because the women's division is going to have less giants, for lack of a better word. It's, it's going to have less big people in them. So when there is one, it's extra special. And Dewdrop was a buffoon here. She acted like a buffoon. And it's not her fault. But um, Charlotte was going through her. Charlotte, Dewdrop got some offense. I mean, when you're that big, you have to get some offense unless they're really done with you. Um, she did that big senton and just crushed Charlotte. I'm like, oh, sweet mother of fuck. But then, of course, Eva's music plays because Eva has to come out, distract. Okay, so they're not done with Eva and Dewdrop. Fine. Distraction, Dewdrop turns around. I think she gets hit with, like, a kick and then Charlotte's finish thing, which doesn't always really take. Um, but whatever, one, two, three, Charlotte wins. And then I'm glad they did this here, even before they did what they did after it. Eva Marie takes the microphone, says she's awesome, or whatever, I don't know what the fuck she's, oh, she pronounced uh, women's incorrectly, because she's that dumb, she said something about the, the Raw Women's Championship, or the Raw Women's Division, uh, no, wait, that was after, never mind, she just stood and posed, turned around, and Charlotte clotheslined her, rightfully so, because like, hey, bitch, you're in my spotlight, get out, and it's exactly what Charlotte should have done. I'm glad they didn't have Charlotte just give give a mean look and walk away, because that would just... No one wants to see that. It made perfect sense. Charlotte to turn around, give her a line, and be like, bitch, my spotlight. Uh, perfect. Exactly what should happen. We come back from the break, I believe. Double check. I think, there was, I think there was a break here. There probably was a break. Let's say there was a break for the, the sake of me being right. We come back, and Eva Marie says, that was rude. I'm, I'm Eva Marie, evolution. My hair is pink or something like that. I don't know what the fuck she said. And she said she should she should also be if she was wrestling Charlotte instead of Dewdrop she would be the Raw Women's Champion. No, it's with Women's Champion. 
was the women's championship. She said she would hold the Raw Women's Championship. What woman? Charlotte? That woman? No, it's the Raw Women's. Hey, like, God, pay attention, Eva Marie. If I have to watch this shit, I mean, you work there. You should know better than I. Uh, Shayna Baszler comes out, <laughs> and Eva Marie. <laughs> Eva Marie runs away like a teenager in a Friday the 13th movie <laughs> who just who was just smoking pot and suddenly and their legs don't work at all and they're tripping over all of the roots and vines and branches in the forest. <laughs> she, <laughs> she ran away like a like a like anytime you see a sitcom and like they have like the young teenage girl wearing heels for the first time and falling up the steps or whatever the fuck. That's what even Marie ran away like and she gets caught and Shana she beats up, beats up her arm, and does the arm stomp step at the thing, and breaks her arm, quote unquote. And people are cheering, and they're I forgot. I don't know what they couldn't make out what they were chanting. They were because the boos were coming out of people who weren't booing for somehow. I, that's amazing. Um, and they were so happy that Shayna broke her arm, which is kind of mean. But well, they know they didn't break her arm. They just like the visual of saying "f you," the symbolism of saying "f you, Eva," not because they know Shayna didn't break her arm. But, they enjoyed the wrestler they like, Shayna beating Eva's ass in presentation. If that makes sense. But that was fun. Goldberg was on the TV. I fast-forwarded. I don't want to hear his voice. I don't want it in my ears. I don't care. I'm assuming he's wrestling Bobby Lashley in Saudi Arabia. Also, don't care. I don't want to know. Um, oh, that was in between the do drop match. And, ah, who the fuck cares? A steel cage lowers from the ceiling and then we go to break and a steel cage match happens. Okay. And if I missed anything else, it didn't make Hulu. Okay. So Mansoor and Ali, uh, teaming with Jeff Hardy, I think to wrestle, I guess, Jinder and his two big guys. I think that's the match. Anything Reggie and Ricochet did with the 24 seven. I didn't see any of that. Anything else happened? I didn't see that either. Big steel cage match. Cage lowers, and here we go. Biggie enters second. He is he's wrestling Bobby Lashley, and the idea of the steel cage is to stop people from interfering, but they never put a roof on it, and haven't since uh, ever in WWF history or WWF history, Worldwide Wrestling Federation. Why was that ever a name of anything? Didn't think I was going to bring that shit up today, did you? So anyway, Stan Hansen body slams Bruno San Martino on his neck and puts him in the hospital. Wait, no, Bob, 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 fast forward. Okay, let's just fast forward to last night. That was stupid. <sighs> Uncle Stan doesn't want you to bring that shit up anyway. Uh, anyway. <laughs> so Lashley attacks Big E before Big, as Big E's going through the ropes in a doorway. And on the outside of the cage... Of course, we start the match outside the cage in a steel cage match. Welcome to the World Wrestling Entertainment. Lashley beats the bejesus out of him. They get in the, in the ring, and then they have a, a great match. Big E really needed this. He needed to be competitive. He needed to fight from underneath, um, which is really hard to do when he's that thick because he's not a tall guy by any means. You'd think of him as being tall because he's so thick, but he's not. He's very, he's very Taz-like. Now that I'm thinking about it for the first time, he really kind of has a Taz build. He might be a, an inch taller than Taz is or was, but but he's got a Taz body, but he's just so thick. Um, I don't think Taz had the upper body he did, but they have those legs. They both have the same legs. So I want to check out their legs some more. What? Uh there's, they use the cage, and they go back and forth, and they, they there's a lot of power moves, and Big E teases, trying to do his big ending finish off the second turnbuckle. Doesn't quite get it. Uh, the Hurt Business do arrive at one point and try to uh, stop Big E from getting out of the cage, and of course, out come the New Day, and they're flying around. And um, I think the Hurt Business actually get into the, the cage. They do something to screw over Big E. They hurt Big E somehow which gives Woods the excuse to run out and slam the door on Lashley. And Kofi does his backwards trust fall thingy. I wish they wouldn't call it that. This screams cooperation, but whatever. Onto the two herd business, and they do their thing. And that's halfway through the match. It's not for the finish. And I really like that because it was different. Instead of, oh, that's the finish. There's a bunch of bullshit. Turn around and someone has to finish. 
they did that, and I think there was even another commercial break. I could be wrong, but the finish was not right after that. The, the, the four of them, and all of their first names, got the hell out of there. And then we continue the match. It makes you forget about them, but we got them out of the way. We, you know, we got the inexplicable, okay, this has to happen. Much better than the traditional way I thought they would just, the lazy way they would just do it, I thought. So I'm happy with this. It's a shame no one watches the show anymore, because some of this shit was good. <laughs> Wrestling's over. It doesn't matter they had a good match. It's not going to change the whole fucking business around. But congratulations, and thank you. But you know. uh, So Big E gets choked out at one point, but he revives himself at the last minute and gets Lashley in or whatever. And he does hit that big ending off the second rope. And I think he gets the one, two, three. I'm pretty sure it's the one, two, three after all that escaping, which is good. It's Biggie's first real, like it's his second real title defense, but is I'm playing with some some pens and stuff. But Biggie wins the thing. He it's not part of a six man. There's no no one else is brawling. Biggie wins the thing. He shows everyone he can beat Lashley in the cage. Theoretically, no interference. You know, just the two men mono a mono. Even with the disadvantage, he had to he had to win with with some heart and not just strength and power and all that, which is good. Which is good. I like that. He's not just beating AJ Styles by overpowering him. For example, you know, that would be kind of like that. Yeah, be kind of anticlimactic. Then we're just fucking with a flaccid wiener, aren't we? What, Bob? I was wrong with you. So the cage rises? I think the cage rises. I couldn't tell from the camera angle. A lot of camera shots um, from the outside, and you just see the, the screen is kind of framed with the, the fencing there of the cage. Different? I didn't think we'd see that. I thought they would just shove a guy in, shove a cameraman in the cage and try not to film him, which is what they do. Uh, cage is up. I think the cage is up. And anyway, we hit, we hear Drew McIntyre's music. Drew McIntyre still wrestles there. Hey, remember him? The guy who carried us through the pandemic, who we threw in the garbage. Remember that guy? And he points the sword. Easy. Easy. Looking at you, Mark. <laughs> Why did I say that? Drew's waving his sword around. <laughs> at, uh, he's waving his sword around a Big E, and then he's just wearing a robe and going, Woo! No, he's not. Stop it. And basically saying, I should be the challenger, because if you remember... Drew McIntyre was not allowed the challenge for the championship as long as Bobby Lashley was champion. That was one of the rules. And now he can challenge. So, I mean, I imagine Drew will just keep Big E busy for a pay-per-view. Well, maybe that'll be a stupid Saudi thing, too. We won't actually like, get it here in the States. But, which is kind of pretentious, telling a bunch of European wrestling fans, like, oh, we didn't get that in the States. Cause, like, we don't get 99.9% .9 of everything. But whatever. I think you know what I mean. So, that is raw. Uh, yeah, I have no idea it, when Drew uh, and E actually takes place. I am a little concerned. I think it's really way too early to have Big E jaw jacking with a guy who was, like, still a popular babyface who led us through the pandemic. Because uh, he's, he's not the most over guy in the world, Drew, but... He sure is damn sympathetic still. No? I think so. So, uh... You would think it would be... Like, I honestly thought AJ. That's what I thought. Like, okay. Like, give him a heel. And AJ, despite his size, could, um... Is, is so athletic and everything else. He's AJ Styles is one of those guys, kind of like Orton, almost as much as Orton, is always a contender for a championship no matter what. At least in, in my eyes. Um... Miz is dancing on TV. Morrison, does he still work there? I haven't seen him in forever. Not on Hulu. So he's they gave that thing up. And there's no heels. That's the thing. So obviously Lashley is his first opponent the first few times because that's clearly an issue. Whenever you do that money in a bank thing, you have to do those rematches, which kind of just negates the, reminds us that the money in a bank uh, does have some theoretical flaws, but whatever. This is the hardest part of the ring. That was fun. That was fun. Good chatting with you guys today.
Uh, tomorrow at some point, God help me, I'm going to try to watch NXT 2.2. I'll do the very best I can. As long as I don't bump my head on the hardest part of the ring. The hardest part of the ring. Ba-da-ba-da-ba. -ba -da -ba.